uh, 16, 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Amen. So this quit ye, you may not know really what that means. This quit means to behave like. So behave like men. If you're going to behave like men, then you have to grow up. So in order to watch ye and stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men and be strong, you need to grow up in the faith. So this is something that we have to do to be able to stand fast. And we are given power in the beginning of, uh, of our new birth to uh, stand fast, but it requires growing up to be able to continue to do this, to be able to, to be like men and be strong because the battle is going to be harder. There's going to be more that is required from you than in the beginning. So you're going to have to be able to be strong and be able to stand fast and watch to be able to make it. <clears throat> the meetings that we attend are helpers of this. They're helper, helpers of our faith. Amen. Amen. Our God has graciously provided the body to minister to one another in order that we may stand fast, in order that we may grow up. The things that we get here, we cannot get from the world. So if you don't take advantage of these things and you're out in the world, you're not going to get the necessary provisions that you'll need to help you to be strong, to quit like men. When we come here, Jesus is washing our feet. He's getting these defilements of the earth off of us. Uh, we have been called to be strangers and pilgrims, not taking gifts from the world, as Brother Given has said. So to me, this means we cannot compromise our faith. We can't think that we get the things of our faith from the world. The world's not going to be the one that's going to help us to uh, stand fast in the faith. They're actually going to be a hindrance to us. Jesus' own words in Matthew, uh, that are recorded in Matthew, says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? You might wonder why these two scriptures go together. Um, why would that be considered serving two? How, how would that be brought in with serving two masters? Well, if you're going to the world for these things, then you're going to be drawn in by these things, and you can only have one master. So you have to depend on the Lord for those things. You've got to serve Him uh, and put Him before everything else. If you turn to the world when the going gets tough, then you'll wind up serving Satan. You can believe this or not, but it's true. Our lives must be lived out in faith. All of our decisions must be based on our faith in God. No matter what decision you make, you've got to consider God first and make your decision based on your faith in God. <clears throat> and we see these examples uh, in the series in Genesis on Abraham and Sarah that we've been going through. And this record is given to us as a helper of our faith. These brethren's whole lives that we this recorded shows us how faith acts. And I started thinking about this, and I said, now if God went to so much detail to show us what faith is like and how you act in faith, why, why would we think that we could act any differently than this and be considered faithful? Amen. After all, Abraham is called the father of the faithful. Amen. Galatians 5.1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So we've been given even more, as already has been brought out before, than Abraham and Sarah. We have Christ now, so we are more able to act in faith than even Abraham and Sarah, we've got more. I wouldn't say we're more able. They acted on what they knew, but we've got more. We've been given more knowledge in order to act. And we no longer see things the way the world sees them. We no, long, we no longer have to be servants to sin. And we have a mind now that can reason on the things of God. We can desire them, and we can act in faith. And each person's faith is tried... And a lot of these things you know, but I think it's encouragement to hear them again because each one of us will be in different parts of our life and our, um, in our life of faith that we need this encouragement. Um, every one of you will be tried in your faith. And 
One reason is to show you that you have faith. So that if you're being tried in your faith, that means you have faith. God already knows you have faith, but your faith is being demonstrated to all the heavenly hosts and to people here on the earth. Matter of fact, it's a comfort to the brethren when they see you acting in faith. And also it's a savor of death to the wicked, so you're doing a dual thing. First uh, Thessalonians 3, 7, and 8 says, Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all of our affliction and distress Amen. by your faith. Amen. So how you live in your time of uh, trial comforts the brethren. Amen. You never know that whatever trial you're going through may help another one of the brethren to go through that same trial later on. Your faith, your trial is not just for you, brethren. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Standing fast in your faith affects more than you. It can be a helper to those looking on. It gives glory to God as he demonstrates his power in you for all that are looking on. Our God is an abundant God, and he provides more than ample provisions for you to do the very things that he requires to make it to glory. 2 Corinthians 4.15 says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, Redound to the glory of God. So really, ultimately, um, these things bring glory to God. That's the ultimate thing. And it goes on to say, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And these meetings help us to be renewed in this. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For these things, for the things that are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We've got to keep this in our forefront of our mind. And this is not just for a few saints. This is for all saints. We will all be victorious together. The Lord, this is his body. He's not going to forsake one member of his body. All of us together, brethren. 1 Peter 1.13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning, your, fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he hath called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. So there was a time when we were ignorant uh, of the devices of Satan, but now we are not ignorant. So don't give the flesh an advantage. If you give it any advantage, and Brother uh, Tony's brought this out many times, it will take you down. It's going to take control. If you let it, you, you've got to always be on the watch, just like Brother Jeremy said this morning. You've got to constantly be awake and be ready. Um, don't forget that it is a fight to the death. But fear not, you shall overcome. All you have to do is fight. Just keep fighting. And in that day, whenever we see uh, Christ, it will be worth it all. It will be just a small price that we paid for this great prize. We'll wonder, why was so little required of us that we get so much for this? We'll, be, we'll uh, sing praises to God. So this morning, um, I want to end with Revelation, something that, that uh, our Lord has said in Revelation. He says, but that, which you already, but that which you have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And in Revelations 3, 11 and 12, he says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So there is a great reward for you if you'll just hold fast. Don't give up. Amen. Okay. Sister Bailey.